Major support for these broadcasts is provided by the CUNY TV Foundation, New York Community Bank, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chelsea Lighting, Capital One Bank, Genova Burns, Giantomasi and Webster, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, The Wickoff Group, Greenberg Traurig, m and Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Additional support is provided by Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, C.B. Richard Ellis, Colliers International New York, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development Levine Builders, DDG, Friedman LLP Accountants and Advisors, Flushing Bank, Herrick Feinstein LLP Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Orfanides Centurion Holdings, John Katsimatidis Red Apple Group, Corman Communities, a.k.a. Hotels, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey Knackle Realty Services, New Banks, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, Popular Community Bank, Sterling & Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, Urban American, and These Friends. They call it Williamsburg. It is the place everyone wants to be in Williamsburg. It is the market. You know, I'm not even allowed. Anyone over 40 is probably not allowed. That's why everybody here is under 40. Mm -hmm. But it is the market for residential, rent, retail, hospitality, restaurants. It is on fire. So as opposed to the old man to tell you what's happening in Williamsburg, I brought a variety of people who are involved with different aspects of Williamsburg. I have the banker, I have the retail expert, I have the, the, the man, the leasing broker for residential sales and uh, development. And last but not least, I have the residential developer. So today my guests include Peter Dorsey, who is the regional president for New York City for M&T Bank. Jared Epstein, who is a partner at Aurora Capital Associates. Andrew Barocas, who is the CEO of MNS. And last but not least, David Schwartz, who is the managing director for Madison Realty Capital slash Silverstone Property Group. <laughs> so, banker, is it too hot? Is it too hot in Williamsburg that everybody, the prices are going up, everybody wants to move there? You know, is the market a little too on fire? It, it's it's all a function of what's going on in other parts of Brooklyn and in Manhattan, and there's not a lot that's been built, whether it's uh, rentals or on the for sale side. So it's definitely hot, and we wouldn't be underwriting things to sell it at what might be the peak levels today, but to what degree you're a well-capitalized sponsor with, with a good experience you've built and you have a good cushion, uh, we're doing uh, deals for our customers who have more frequently now gone to Brooklyn and gone to Williamsburg to develop, and that is much more so true than it was five years ago. So he, here's the question. You, you just bring up the point, have prices reached their peak? Andrew, have prices reached their peak in Williamsburg? Not at all. I mean, it's a question that's frequently asked by a lot of reporters, and, you know, my answer to them is, you know. Get reporters. We want, this is not inside baseball. We want the truth, okay? Reporters write what they want. I mean, there, there's, you know, is there a ceiling in Manhattan? You know, you hear about $3,500, $10,000 a foot, you know, and I think the same thing applies to Williamsburg. Um, you know, I personally think it's the most undervalued condo market out there. Um, you know, we were, uh, you know, the average uh, price was $898 a foot for condos in the fourth quarter of 2012. Um, you know, it's, it's an area but, where... But, but I still remember in 2007, the average price might have been uh, $500 a foot. To me, that's a pretty big increase from 500 to 900 And there's still room to go. Um, you know, as David could tell you, I mean, you're getting rents in the mid-60s, and, you know, that's where we are today. 
and there's a lot of inventory coming to the market, a lot of premier waterfront properties, and I think you're going to exceed those amounts. So I think if you look at an area in Manhattan, for example, that's getting $65 plus a foot on rentals, you know, what are they getting in condos? And it's a significant amount more. Yeah, than I, I look at Manhattan, I, I, and I, I've been, uh, they allowed me to go to Williamsburg maybe two or three times. You know, I had to get my passport over there. But there's a couple of trains to go into Williamsburg. It's not like going to Manhattan where you can have 13 trains to be in lower Manhattan or something like that. They, you, know, you know, I think that's true. I mean, first of all, they did reroute the M train, which now comes up 6th Avenue. But, you know, if everybody wanted to, to, if trains were the only thing, everybody would be in Long Island City or in Times Square. I think it's, you know, Williamsburg. But, but trains are an important factor, I sure. would say. They certainly are, but you know what we see is, um, you know, there's a lot of people that work non-traditional jobs. There are people that you leave at different times. A lot of people are riding bikes. A lot of people are working in Brooklyn. A lot of people are freelancing and working from home. And you know what, people do have busy commutes, you know, throughout the city. So, to make a community a true 24/7, and we, and I we were talking prior to the show when they broke ground for Northside Pier. So it's like. In August of 2006, when the development hadn't started, what developments were the small developments? There wasn't really any major, and it was in different sizes. And where Northside Piers was the other neighborhood over there. But in order to have that true 24/7 community, you need other situations. And part of the situation is what Jared and his partners at Aurora are doing, taking a site which was originally going to be a condominium, and now you're making it retail. So let's talk about retail, because retail was underserved in Williamsburg. As the, and with all the people right. moving in, you need good retail. As the community, can, and it is still gentrifying, but as it was gentrifying, families and wealthy individuals were hearing about Williamsburg as a great place to live. And as they came to the neighborhood, it enticed national retailers to have it on their, on their radar screen. Brooklyn has become a real brand. Um, Vodka, which is one, uh, Absolute Vodka, which is one of the greatest marketers in the world, ha created Brooklyn Vodka. Um, you have uh, the Brooklyn Nets, you have Brooklyn Ice Cream, Brooklyn Bowl, Brooklyn Burgers. Um, Nike made a shoe based on Brooklyn. So the, the, the powerful brand that Brooklyn has become has caught the attention of all the national retailers, how and they want to be there. How now. difficult was it to get a, a, a Whole Foods? which is, you know, the premier... The majority of our development sites that or investments that we make are... We go after the best, the best of the best, and we seek uh, you don't abnormal think, you, you don't returns. think Gristidis would have done well? No, that. we were thinking... When we, when we go after a site, we want... I like John, but, you know, it's hard John enough, is not... The it's hard enough to lease market. a space. You, as long as you... The, when you have the best of the best, it makes it a lot... That much easier. Whole Foods was a natural. Joe Fresh is a... Busting out of the seams, they want to expand everywhere. You know, owned by a billion-dollar family from um, Canada. Canada. New York Sports Club, a natural, just a gym for the neighborhood. Urban Outfitters is looking Blink? for a space. Why, why couldn't it Blink be? Fitness is a little bit lower end. We have them in six of our properties. It's owned by Equinox, but it's uh, a different different demographic. And I think there's a retro fitness in, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in Williamsburg. A month. Yep. So this is a, a, I wouldn't say higher end, but a little, a, maybe a little bit, a cut above, a cut what above. A, what about a, uh, a pharmacy? There's a Dwayne Reed actually right next to our site. I think that's owned by SL Green. Yeah, they just correct, it, right? right? And there's a CVS North Third blocks away. And then there's a Dwayne Reed over at uh, North Side. At the edge. Yeah, at the edge. At the edge, right? Yeah. But that's but I think you know I was when I was walking up to the studio before you know, 425th Avenue was where Comp USA was for years, mm -hmm. and then they went out of business. Mm -hmm. It took them about five years to readjust the the property, and one of the large properties is CVS. Mm -hmm. And today the situation is, in many cases, CVS is a grocery store because 4,000 square feet, 5,000, you know, square feet are grocery, so it, it serves a, a portion of the services. Of yeah, that's a component. Dwayne Reed's doing that now, right. too, with a higher-end model. Yeah. I, I don't love what they did over there. I mean, that's not part of Williamsburg. Is there more potential? How much space is left to be developed in Williamsburg? I mean, there's, there's still a lot of space. You They're know, breaking ground soon, right on 100,000 100, feet 100, of retail. Feet just announced. 183 units. Uh, who is that? Heritage Heritage Equity? Yeah, yeah that's, they're doing retail, commercial, yeah. but we're building 169 units there. There's still a lot of 
sites to be developed. If you go through Williamsburg, you still have operating manufacturing buildings. So you remember we were talking before the show about the people who were building in 2004, 2005, 2006, some of them very small developers who were able to buy these sites maybe at very low prices because they, they had known about the zoning or something like that. And they really did some shoddy work and they really you know, undercapitalized. They pushed, the, yeah, they pushed a lot of the zoning codes. There's right. an architect, as we right. could all name, I'm sure right. that was that was famous. Right, but, but I mean, you know, th those foreclosures, banks don't forget. You know, even though the world has got better, the Here's what's happened, at, at least from my perspective. You had low barriers of entry to Williamsburg. Uh, the, uh, the development sites were inexpensive. They were plentiful. Uh, there was, uh, uh, you could buy land there. You could buy development sites. And you had capital markets that were very loose, uh, historically incredibly loose, where it required little equity and little resume or expertise to get a development loan. That was a unique window and because of that there were a lot of construction projects that had less structure you know if they were financed by banks <coughs> and um, uh, there was a there was a higher I don't know the exact number but higher rate of foreclosure in that market because of that um, now the people that are attracted and there were definitely exceptions to that you know uh, with with Levine and others uh, building uh, the edge now you're seeing some and of Toll the, Brothers and Toll Brothers, yeah, North, and, North Side, and North Side Pier. So you had some of the national uh, urban uh, uh, departments of the tolls, et cetera. Now you're starting to see some of the, the larger develop, bro, de developers from Brooklyn and some of the developers from Manhattan. Right. I mean, you, you have the Domino site, which you know which is a huge site. You know, uh, would you say that's in a different neighborhood in Williamsburg? Absolutely. Well, would it attract the same type of uh, buyers and renters. I mean, you 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 know, it'll it'll create a whole new community over there. Um, you know, th to answer the question today, um, yes, there's definitely a difference in north side, south side, uh, but I think that that'll that'll you know all come together. But you know, we talk years. about south side. You know, for my viewers, you know, uh, the Rheingold site, you know, uh, Schaefer's Crossing, mm -hmm. you know, was that's uh, south of the bridge. That's that's yeah. really that's really, south. The, the, that's the really yeah. south. You know, and then the Domino is also. Uh, a far distance. Domino's in the much, but is it's closer to correct. central Williamsburg. It's north of the bridge. I think the division of Williamsburg now is probably Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, it used to be division. Although it's pushing on the waterfront, you know, mm -hmm. because of some of those projects like Schaefer's. And At one time when I remember, everybody wanted to be as close as possible to Bedford because maybe mm -hmm. the train was, that the, way, yeah. was, the, was the big thing. Is that, you still feel that way about Williamsburg? In terms of retail, it's the driving force behind every deal that's happening. What's happening to the small retailer? The smaller the retailers. Small retailers are, are dying. Are they, no, some of them are sections? doing doing very very well. You know, right. you have cafes and restaurants on Bedford that are thriving. Uh, as rents are going to continue to rise, they're going to be pushed out to Berry and Driggs and maybe over to Kent and Wythe. Look what's happening on Wythe. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. So what are, you know, there are two hotels in Williamsburg. Do you think Williamsburg could absorb? I mean, both of them opened up last year, the Wythe, we which, you, we which you financed, and the King and Grove, which wasn't called King and Grove, which was changed to King and Grove. Uh, according to my occupancy numbers, I'm not statistically like uh, Barocus with his MNS numbers over here, <laughs> but, you know, they're at eighty-five percent occupancy. And they're doing, I mean, Brooklyn, real rates too. With real rates, I mean, five hundred dollars. They're they're getting high number rates, um, and the bars, the rooftop bars over there, because rooftops do Packed. well anyway. They're Hides, doing really yeah, great. Hides is doing um, so, do you see more hotels? Absolutely. I mean, they're they're just um, King Grove. They're about to start renovating again, um, redoing the the restaurant there. They're redoing the whole lobby. Um, they're doing extremely well, so I think there's definitely demand, and I think that there's room and opportunity for more. Peter, you were I, one other comment to pick up um, before about Bedford being the main drag. When they rezone the waterfront, it changed where people right. develop. So that was, I, th like, I think, that was a big change uh, in terms of of the waterfront taking on a different level of importance. But the we financed the Wyeth uh, with Liberty Bonds 2009. It took uh, Jed had a lot of vision for that, that was his project, Walentis. And he had uh, partners that were already on the scene in Williamsburg and did a lot, they had a lot of Perfect. expertise. Perfect, Harlow, Lawrence. Yeah, so they, the you know, they brought the F&B component to it, which was 
important. Uh, but it takes, you know, for us, it took a little bit of vision and a real relationship. And we wouldn't have done that for many folks. And we, we have a lot of confidence in them. But having gone through it since they built it and seen how uh, we, we thought it would do well, we, we guessed it would do well. We didn't expect, expect it, to, it do to. As, to do as well as it now, I mean, they hit it right on right, with that. You, with now, that. you've been involved with Williamsburg for a number of years, and, and you have some Israeli investors as partners, right? How these, you know, how did, how did the Tel Aviv and Jerusalem think of, of Williamsburg? What, they, <laughs> they think the neighborhood just because it's on the water? I mean... Uh, you know, Williamsburg <laughs> is a surprisingly international uh, market there. You know, we leased up our building. And we had people from, you know, from all over, from Europe, Australia, um, from Israel. And, you know, I think that they're, you know, that they felt comfortable with it. Also, Williamsburg, because there's so many new buildings there, it was very easy for people to comp and to understand that market because we had so many, you know, if you went out to M&S or somebody, they can give you a comp report and you can see a building that was just completed down the block and what kind of rents. So I think it was easy for investors to really understand the market quickly. So let's, what, what are residential rents in Williamsburg today? I mean, it varies, um, you know, from stuff like David's doing to, you know, I just heard of, um, you know, a small project right off of Bedford where, you know, they're getting $80 plus a foot. And you, you think to yourself, you know, that's a, you know, a very, very high number to achieve. <laughs> and you take a 700 small square unit. foot three bedroom with one bath. Wait, wait, 700 square foot Is three that a bedroom? conversion or that's a new conversion? Wait a second. No, I, I knew about the new modular yeah, if, uh, apartment if, 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 in uh, Bloomberg. Uh, <laughs> what is this? I mean, I mean, it's a 700 two. square foot three bedroom. And if you do the numbers, it's $1,600 a room. Um, you know, you're over $80 you, a foot. You, you have to be thin to get into it. I think you can't get it. <laughs> okay, you're too big go. on the side. I mean, come on, <laughs> I lost weight, worse. but I mean, you're tall inside. I mean, you, you, you can't get it to these. That's right. You know, it's a single I think room. the real question is, Michael, we're all under 40, like you mentioned before. You're a little bit more seasoned. You've seen things. Bobby, my partner, Bobby carries 35. I'm 33. We're investing. We're now the largest landlord in Soho on Broadway. But that's a community that might have been like Williamsburg back in the day. It gentrified. It became amazing. It went down. It came up. We're investing in the Meatpacking District, which uh, has an incredible amount I, I'm of not nightlife and restaurants. But, it's a but what's going to happen to Williamsburg? The rents are surging. Retail's now at 200 bucks a foot. Rents for apartments are $80 a foot. Condos? No, 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 not $80 no, no, a foot. No, they're in the 60s. I think, okay. 60, I think 60. the true rents are. Are people going to go back to I Manhattan? Is Williamsburg going to. What, what ah, happens? But what's you, next? But, but you know what? You bring an interesting point. You what's know, next? there's a question, and, you know, I've said this to a number of people on the show, is even though for your Denny, the ultimate optimist, people can afford rent up to a certain point. People, you know, at one time, you know, when you started in banking and when I'm around, it was like maybe 30% of your income should go towards your apartment. Then people went up to 40%. I don't believe that people can afford 50%. Okay, there are certain people who are in Williamsburg who are earning a lot of money. They can afford it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when it goes to that level, and there, there's a buddy of mine who's looking for an apartment in Manhattan, and we looked at something, uh, and he's, we went to a site, and Glenwood, who's one of the best developers, the cheapest apartments were on the Upper East Side. I mean, I was able to, I said to him, here's a one bedroom, a nice building where you can pay 2,700. That, uh, that uh, an 800 square foot apartment in Williamsburg is $80 a foot. This was forty-four dollars a foot. But what I mean, you're seeing, the reason that one, if it's eighty, is eighty, is because they've broken it and they're getting shares. So people look at it as an an entree into a cool, hip neighborhood. They're young. They're not going to be in their apartment. Great and point. And I think another interesting point is, people when they rent an apartment in David's building that that you recently did, and the other one, they don't look at the square footage. They have no idea and certain ideas of what. Mm -hmm. It's a one bedroom. How much it's can a I get a bed bedroom? And, and a okay. It's room count. And, you know, you know, someone told me they were looking at a, an apartment in Tudor City. He said, it's a studio. I said, yes. And how big is it? It's a studio. Now, a studio, it's one of, it's 230 square feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, studios, you know, it's, it's a bad. question of what the size footage is on that. So uh, my question is, Will they be priced out? I think it depends on who, how the age and the income demographics of that individual is. Because but, you said before, somebody bought an apartment in the edge for $5 million. I mean, you, you know, I, I, I see a ton of money coming in and, and parents supporting children. And, and, you know, I mean, I have a handful of apartments at the edge. Um, you know, the guarantors that come in are $2 million plus incomes. 
Um, you know, we had a tremendous amount of all cash buyers with the last 10% of apartments at the edge. Um, you have a, just a lot of money coming into you know, Williamsburg. You, you, know, you, you to bring do with up the confidence. a very interesting point with parents supporting kids. I remember a number of years ago, I'm in Murray Hill for the Jewish High Holidays, and I'm at a synagogue, and a person I said, "Where?" He says, "I'm from Atlanta." I said, "Where do you?" He says, "My daughter lives in Murray Hill." He says, "I'm, I'm subsidizing her, her apartment in Murray Hill." So. Are there a lot of subsidized apartments, would you say, in Williamsburg, David? I think less now than five years ago. We just finished the new building and we only had one apartment with guarantors because the average age has gotten mm -hmm. a little bit older in Williamsburg in the north side. I think the younger crowd has started to move out further east into Bushwick, Bushwick yeah. but they used to call East Williamsburg, they call Bushwick now again, it's, it's cooler. Cool. But we found that you know, average age people are making, you know, real money, you know, the renters are making $200,000, $300,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they can afford to pay those kind of rents. Uh, but there were fewer guarantors than we would have thought going into it. So who do we see moving uh, into Williamsburg, uh, Andrew? Who, who are the purchasers? Who, who's, you know, who's renting, who's buying? Are they, are they native New Yorkers? I mean, everybody wants to be in New York City, but where are they? I mean, you have a little of everything right now. Um, you have a lot of people that are renting and looking to buy. Um, you have a lot of people who are currently owners in Williamsburg who would love nothing more than to buy up. Um, there's just no inventory. That's that's the biggest biggest problem. We're about to release some units um, in the next uh, month or so, and there's going to be a tremendous demand. And I, you know, we're going to be at the $1,200 a foot range. You know, when we talk range, another th situation, especially in Manhattan, is X amount of land available yeah. for development. Okay, and we were talking about what happened with you on your site that it was bid up on the pricing. Sure. I remember when I was involved with Apollo, and I. I was very angry at the people who were, I went to contract to buy a site, and I, I got upset we paid like $160 a developable foot, uh, and the market then collapsed and went down. What is vacant land or developable land selling for in Williamsburg today? Over 250 a foot. If you could project rents of 50 to 200, depending on the neighborhood for the retail, <laughs> residential rents at $65 a foot, you'd want to buy everything at 250 bucks a foot. But my other question on Williamsburg is, and something, it's a banking point of view, mm -hmm. a lot of these things were built with tax incentives. Sure. You know, we had 25 year tax advantages on the edge, you know. Are all new developments with tax advantages or tax incentives? Well, you're st you still have some, but I think that's gonna be, that'll be phasing out as time goes on and then people will have to decide if they're going to do the 20 percent affordable to get the 421a or not so a lot of people that are have the sort of grandfathered in old projects but that changes the world around because the the other affordable before in williamsburg was not on site it was in a separate building it yeah. changed the yeah. dimension when you take an 80 20 it's a it's a different market it's in the same building everything's it, there and it should be built as affordable because the city of new york needs it there's 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 also a lot of uh concern that the gentrification is pushing people out. So you have the religious community south of the bridge, and you have, which is in a housing crisis, uh, and you have uh, primary Latino neighborhood on the south streets, you know, north of the bridge I before mean, you get it. Look, and and, and there's, there are, there's a lot of powerful community advocates. I mean, Domino, are, let's be realistic. Domino is requiring a substantial portion of uh, yeah, affordable sure. housing within in the development. Well, they, they acquired it, everyone knows, through, through the CPC, which, is, which has a, a affordable housing mission uh, more so. Um, but that was part of the zoning. The, in order for them to get what get they the wanted, zone. they had it to provide an affordable component, and the city of New York needs that affordable component. You know, a lot of people would say, can a neighborhood absorb a Whole Foods? And a, a good example is Whole Foods is moving into Harlem. Whole Foods is, and, and Whole Foods is more expensive. But people want that quality. They want that type That's of right. uh, appeal. Well, it tells you about the demographics of the neighborhood. They're changing. <laughs> they've shifted, and they're continuing. It's a young neighborhood, yep. but it seems to be that it's it's the the, the youth is getting pushed out um, to yeah. Bushwick and others, and it's becoming a more established, probably more money deeper, not just parents as guarantors. I think the average age in Williamsburg now is 36. There's 125,000 residents, and 57% of the population is single. As that 
changes and more families are coming so, in. There, oh, there was a baby fest, I think it was a couple of weekends ago. Yeah, There's carriages everywhere. I mean, every time I go into the edge, I mean. We're at a real, I think we're at an inflection, or we're approaching an inflection point where, you know, the tide can continue to rise, but we're going to mellow out here for a little bit, or it, it could slowly, you know, stall and go the other way. You see more uh, baby carriages. I mean, there's there's been a ton of baby baby carriages. I think they're they're getting out of carriages these days. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I mean, I went I was at the edge a couple weeks ago. There was I mean, I counted there were 22 children that were living in the building that were actually there for like a swim instruction. Now, I mean, but but you know, now you bring out an interesting point. I remember a number of years ago I did a show on Jersey City, and part of the biggest problem in Jersey City was schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when when you're single it doesn't matter the schools when, the schools have improved you know drastically in in williamsburg a lot of charter schools um you know the the schools have definitely improved there's still a problem at the middle school level um i think that that as soon as you start getting more parents active in the community i think it'll start to improve there what happened believe, in jersey yeah. city was they had to some of the landlords especially Leferak and mm -hmm. others they built their own. Built, yeah. built. They built their own school. They provided this type of school, you know, uh, in in the to 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 improve the neighborhood. And I believe that you may have to do that. In but when people start confronting having to go to public school after uh, elementary schools, and uh, that's when they wind up leaving if they can't if they if they don't want right. to go to the public school system and they wind up looking for private schools in Brooklyn. They're they're like Manhattan. They're uh, having real issues with and the application rates. There's yeah. shortages, and then you look at these big master plan sites like in Long Island City and they 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 were forced to put build schools as part of that plan. It's more fractured in Williamsburg so I even they, in like a Greenpoint, Sam, it's very similar. Yeah. But I think also a lot of the kids are still young and as as they've gotten better older, I mean you've seen the elementary schools have gotten better. Absolutely. You know, so as these kids because they back, back when we were there in two thousand four you you maybe would see one baby carriage and now if you stand, you know, on North Sixth Street You'll be run over by baby carriages. Have the people who moved in in 2004 stayed? Have they expanded or they have? Or uh, I think that's a big thing that we're seeing. A lot of the people who had kids there didn't move there with kids. They lived there and then had kids and decided to stay. So I think those were certainly. And where these people moved? Because, you know, did, did they have, I mean, they didn't have the, that's part of the reason for their major development over here. But where were these people able to afford moving up? A lot of them were, you know, they got older, you know, they were the 24-year-old kids who, you know, were living there in, you know, four to an apartment. It's amazing. We're talking one of, about one of the most gritty neighborhoods in Manhattan. Grit meets becoming clever. becoming luxury <laughs> and how young hipsters are becoming parents and the evolution of a neighborhood and what happens when Williamsburg loses that hip and cool factor. I mean, it, and, the, and that's what you're there. I, more mean, than I, mean, I mean, the What's example, the I mean, the, the answer is, is that I just took a retail space actually at the edge right. and I have frolic the kids play center <laughs> next door knocking on my door, right. you know, before I get my permits I that they want to combine I would, the I space. Would, I wish I could spend more time on Williamsburg and maybe in a couple of months we will. And I'd like to thank everyone who's in different aspects of development and involvement in Williamsburg for being here. I'd like to thank Peter Dossie, Jared Epstein, Andrew Barocas and David Schwartz, and I'll see everyone next week. Thank, Thank you. you, Michael. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.